Speaking of fascinating, interesting dudes, uh, I want to bring out our next guest. He's a really smart, very creative guy, and uh, frankly, I'm a little bit in love with him. Please welcome, welcome Marco Arment. <laughs> that works, right? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, this is nice. We're like we're um, stepping up the nerdiness. We're going. From that. We're going. Yeah, we're getting increasingly nerdy. At the end of the wow. show, we're just going to be sitting here coding. Is that cool? Well, as long as we put two big top windows on the screen and one red, one green. Nah, two inside baseball. All right. Is that a coding thing? I'm confused. To some people. I'm totally confused right now. So, Marco, we're just going to pretend that ever happened. I didn't get confused by that joke. We're just moving right along here. Um, Marco, you're an interesting man. Well, thank you. you are one of the people who created Tumblr, yep. uh, which, as I said, we've all used many, many <laughs> times, multiple times a day. Uh, Tell your bosses I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, and Instapaper, yep. which now everybody it probably says Instagram to you every time they talk about it, right? They're like, you created Instagram. That's awesome. How does it feel to have a billion dollars? Yeah, I. <laughs> Can you? Will you buy? I actually, I heard a few of those. Yeah, yeah that was uh, an interesting day. So <laughs> I'm sure you did, dude. Congrats. <laughs> yeah. uh, so tell me, about, I want to talk about Tumblr a little bit. I mean, Tumblr has become a phenomenon. I mean, everybody uses it. Like every new site I see is just a Tumblr site, and uh, and obviously it's been great for the porn industry. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it hasn't been. Uh, <laughs> But for porn users. Uh, but but where, when did that start? How did that start? What was your role? Just can you give me like a little bit of background? Sure. And like uh, spice it up. Sexy. Sexy stuff. <laughs> as sexy as two guys writing code in an office for a couple of years. That's very sexy. That's very se I don't know why I'm so focused on sex right now. I did say I was a little bit in love with you. It so is late can... at night, you know. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so what, where, how did that start? Um, it started as um, me and David Karp. Um, David had a consulting company just making websites for people. And uh, one day we were, we were between clients for about two weeks. And he said, hey, I've had this idea. I want to work on it. Let's see what we can get done in the next two weeks before we got to do this next project. And that was Tumblr. And that was uh, late 2006. And we built the prototype. And it took off. We, we kept iterating on it as we were doing client work until eventually the client work had to be dropped because we had to do this thing full time. Yeah, Tumblr work. Yeah. So, so the, what was the idea? It was like, I. I I mean, it's like this weird halfway place between WordPress and Twitter. You know, it's this kind Certainly. of like, was the idea like blogging is just too complicated? That was basically it. It, it was that a lot of us, especially if, if you were a nerd playing with the internet in 2006, chances are you had started and abandoned a blog. <laughs> I have several. <laughs> right, a lot of people did. Yeah. Uh, and the problem is that the, at the time, what was really the traditional WordPress movable type style format is more like a magazine column where it's a lot of work. You, you're writing these longer pieces, lots of paragraphs, and throwing in images and stuff every day or, or once a week or at least. You gotta, you gotta do this. As you know, it takes a lot of time. Yes, and very time consuming. Right. And, and if you're doing it as just like a little side hobby and you only get like one or two comments in a week and one of them spam and the other one's telling you that you know, you're, you're stupid, um, it's kind of hard to keep the motivation going to keep something like that up. So Tumblr was created to, to lower the, the friction, to make publishing online easy, and to lower the expectation that you had to produce this giant magazine column every day. Because in reality, most people just wouldn't, and they would abandon it. And with Tumblr, that wasn't really an issue, because what the platform cultivated and expected was much more sustainable, because it was so much easier. Right. Did you, did you think that, I mean, I know, Maybe I don't know the answer to this, but did you think it would become this, this kind of default almost? I mean, that's what it's become really. When now, when people start something, I mean, it feels like they're, they've moved away from like, oh, I'm going to start a WordPress blog to, I'm just going to start a Tumblr. And I like I have seven Tumblrs, right. and they're all like, I one day I was like, I'm going to do a Tumblr just of pictures of bags I like. Why not? Which is cool, right? Uh, <laughs> And I just started it. I did one. I was going to uh, film trailer reviews. I was just going to do film trailer reviews. That's good. I, like I that. did like six, and now it's abandoned. But, it, but Tumblr makes it so, it's so easy. Did you expect that it would be this default, or were you like, well, it would just be an easier way to do a blog? I knew that you know, once we had the product at a usable stage pretty early on, I knew that people who used it were going to love it. But I think what surprised me 
is how much it took over outside of people who used to be the ones blogging. You know, ba you know people who were blogging, are most, mostly nerds, you know, now it's a lot more people. It's like normals. It's everybody. Uh, <laughs> There's nobody no here, probably. <laughs> no, certainly Sorry. not. <laughs> so maybe somebody who wandered in by accident. Maybe, yeah. They have a Tumblr, though, we can agree. Or, or seven of them. Yes, that's right. And one is, about, one is about bags. So, so you, you stopped working at Tumblr when? Uh, 2010, end of 2010. So pretty recently. Yeah. And, and so talk to me about Instapaper. This was your, your next big sure. project. Um, what, why, why did you... Where did Instapaper come from? And how, was it, were you sitting there one day? You'd, I mean, you were like bookmarking something. You were like, there's got to be a better way to do this. Is Basically, yeah. I mean, what happened was in, in late 2007, I got an iPhone. And I was still working at Tumblr, and I was commuting every day on the train. Um, not the subway, you know, the, the, the suburb train like that no, actual, nobody here knows about. An actual train. An actual train. The, uh, yeah. the uh, LIRR or the... No, uh, the Metro North. Metro North. Yeah, which leads up to what most people consider farmland upstate even though it's like 10 miles. You live way. on a farm? Uh, pretty much, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, but everyone thinks I do. We'll keep that up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I had this long train commute, and I, I would be browsing the web at work like I wasn't supposed to be doing, but when you're making a platform about browsing the web, it's really hard not to while you're testing it. Um, so I was browsing the web at work, and I would find links to read, and I wouldn't have time to read them because I was supposed to be working. Uh, so I would, I would want to save them, and read them sometime. Um, and at the same time, I was on the train, and I had this new iPhone that had this terrible edge connection and was offline half the time for the ride. And I wanted to read things on the train, but by the time I got there, the connection was too slow to browse much, to browse around. And I would have already gone through RSS feeds, Dig, which at the time still mattered. Uh, <laughs> you know, I would have gone through all these things, and so, it was like I, I was burning through my queue when I couldn't read it, and when I could read it, there was nothing there. So I made Instapaper to bridge that gap, to solve that problem, to be a, a, just a, a temporary place, just the one-click bookmark, just save it. I don't want to tag it. I don't want to like categorize it and reference this forever in a giant you know, library of things I've ever read. It was just a temporary, like, I haven't read this, but I want to. Yeah. Save it until I have read it, and then get rid of it. Do you feel it's the highest form of flattery that, that Apple has completely ripped you off? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, is that, is, does, is that weird for you? I'd be really upset if I were you, because you're, you know, you're just was, a guy. Yeah. Just a guy living on a farm. Right. <laughs> and here comes big, bad Apple, and they're just like, oh, hey, we're going to make this other thing that does exactly what Instapaper does that's going to be default in all of our browsers. Well, it helped a lot that they really did kind of a half-baked job of it. <laughs> Um, really? That's interesting. Do you think they did a half-baked job? I mean, the first version had pretty much no... It, the first version was basically a bookmark folder. Right. Um, so, you know, now, and they're adding offline support and mountain line, although I'm not supposed to know that, but I'm not officially a Mac developer, so I'm allowed to tell you that. Uh, you're, not a, you're not a Mac developer. Right. Right. I, I actually haven't seen Mountain Lion. Uh -huh. You probably have seen more of it than I I don't know anything about it. Of course uh, not. But, it's, but, you're, but you're telling me that... Uh, they're adding offline. Yeah, that's somebody on Twitter told me they were adding offline. I assume, I assume they're right. That's good. Well, somebody people on, on the internet are always sure, right. Sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, of course they are. Right. Like Wikipedia, always right. Uh huh. <laughs> always right. Always, yeah. Uh, yeah, but no, it seems crazy to me. Has it has it hurt? Has it hurt business? It's hard to tell. My business is fine. It that feature was released a year ago, the, the main reading list feature, and then you know we'll see this summer when they release the offline version of it. Uh, it's hard to tell. I mean, the, the reality is that's only useful if you use Safari everywhere. Right. And only about a third of my customers do. Well, you're using mobile. Everybody's using mobile Safari. Right. But I think that the desktop syncing part is very important. I mean, there are a lot of people who, who both get and save the links on their iOS devices. Right. But there's also a lot who were doing what the way I originally made it, which was you save it on a computer, and then you go read on your devices later. Right. So, so um, on, on the topic of Instapaper, there's been a lot of controversy about your I don't know if I want to call it allegiance to iOS, but you, you have not, um, uh, you won't make an Android application. Let right. me just say, I'm going to say it bluntly. Yeah. And you even, you even had this like challenge, which was if oh. somebody makes, I want to make sure I get this right. It's that like was if, so misunderstood. If somebody makes a good uh, Android Instapaper client, you'll call it Instapaper for Android, and you'll split the profits. Close. It was if that one developer that I was linking to made it. 
it wasn't it wasn't intended to be an open challenge because I don't. Oh, you know, it seemed like, like in, an open challenge. I've been the, working in the, on the Instapaper paper app. Of course, <laughs> for Android. In, in the design world, spec work is considered a very bad word, which is the the idea. I'm sorry, designers, if I'm getting this wrong. Uh, the idea is like you kind of put out a call. Hey, everyone, do something. You know, work for free. And if we like your thing, we'll pick it and we'll pay you. Yeah. So you have a whole bunch of people working for free, and most of them just get nothing out of it. I didn't want to do that. I, that. That's why I didn't intend for it to be like a, hey, everyone try, and just whoever gets there first wins it, You know, because I don't want people to waste all their time. So this guy didn't do it, I guess. Yeah, it didn't happen. What about anybody else? Have you looked? Eh. Why don't you, why don't you, just, make, why don't you, why don't you just make something for Android? I mean, it is. So a, I feel you know, like it is. A, it is in the market in a big way, right? That's agreed. I, I totally There's agree. Like literally half of smartphones. So are Blackberries. Can't. Yeah. So yeah, but come you on. Know, I mean, don't let's not be. <laughs> don't give me that straw man argument. Uh, of course. I mean, I mean, it's a real platform. It is a real platform, and it's big, no question. Uh, but the thing is, you know, if you are in the business of trying to get as many users as possible. Something like Instagram, that actually makes sense to spread to Android, get as many users as you can. Usually it's for free, uh, some kind of free service. That makes sense. Tumblr has to have an Android app. Totally makes sense. But when you're in the business of selling the app, the majority of Instapaper's revenue comes from the app sales. So I'm selling a $5 app. On iOS, that's pretty expensive. On Android, that's probably impossible. And I, I, don't, I buy Android apps all the time. And everyone's just like you. Well, I mean, there, there are people buying Android apps. Right. I mean, there are more well, yeah, and more there, developers there making apps for Android. I'm sure somewhere. No, I mean, there are. No, there definitely are. I'm telling you. I, see, I know people with Android phones that buy apps. Of course. Okay, I do. Yeah, you know a person. You don't, but you think that all the other people who, are not, one guy, who don't write for The Verge right. are like, no way, I don't need apps. Well, it's not all of them. It, it's a question of really just economics and how to allocate limited resources, which right. is the, the most limited resource that I have right now is my time. And that's everyone's most limited resource. Uh, you know, you, uh, I, I only have this one awesome version of the app that I'm really focused on. If I were to take time off and either, either, either do an Android app myself or pay someone else a whole bunch of money to do it, that would significantly detract from my ability to make the iOS app great. And now, in the face of ever increasing competition, I can't afford to let up. Right. I have to keep making the iOS app. Awesome. I mean, you're competing with Apple, so you can't really screw around. I'm, comp I, I'm competing with everyone who doesn't charge any money. <laughs> right. And, and Pocket. Yeah, and what do, what do Readability. You, yeah. Evernote, clearly. What do you think? Spool. What do you think? Scribd's balloon thing. Which, uh, and which one, do, which one do you like the best out of all of your competition? Honestly, I've seen very few of them. You might want to check them out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tell you something. I mean, in all seriousness, I've talked to people in our industry. There are other people that are like, yeah, I don't really check out the competition. John Rubenstein from Palm, famously, was like, yeah, I haven't really seen an iPhone. Well, that went well. We know how that ended. Yeah. <laughs> so my suggestion, this is my, from uh, one man to no, another, I've, I've as seen a friend. A yeah, I've seen the big ones. OK. There's a whole bunch of little ones. I've seen the big ones. And are you, are you going to add, do you think you're going to add features or try to compete on any of the stuff? Like Pocket does a bunch of stuff that Instapaper doesn't. I mean, it does some things, not a bunch. It does more things than it does. Yeah. Um, no, I, you know, I. Uh, I, I highly value originality, and we have to we have to distinguish. There was that awesome uh, HP Envy, whatever that came out. You know, we have to distinguish between. Did you say HP Envy? Whatever the. You mean the, the computer that looks exactly like a MacBook? Yeah, that thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the HP. The HP Envy. MacBook Air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we we have to distinguish with originality. You know, the the problem of simultaneous invention versus true originality. Now. It, you know, I, I want to be the original. In, in many ways of what Instapaper does, it is the original. And I, I, I like Apple products because many of them are very original. Not all, of course, but many. And you know, I, I value that a lot. I'm, I'm, I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. And so I don't want to copy other people's products or features if it's not something obvious. Right. But I think if it is something obvious, like, OK, I have a Read Later app, and if you tap on a link, should it just open, or should it offer you an option to read that link later? You know, like that's a once you're building a read later app, that's a pretty obvious feature. Right. And so, if someone else did that first, and then I copied it later, I wouldn't really feel bad about that. So when I look at other competitors' features, and you know, if some if if a competitor does a feature before me, and I'm getting a lot of pressure to add it, I try to be original as much as possible in the sense that if I try to not just copy it directly, I try to you know, only do things that, only copy things that I would have come upon anyway, 
right. um, <laughs> it, that were obvious. Yeah, you're walking a fine line there. Or, <laughs> or if, if I can't do that, if it's something that someone else just made a really good point and did this awesome feature that I never would have thought of, and I'm like, I really have to implement that to stay competitive. I'll try to do it differently. Mm -hmm. I'll try to do it like in a substantially different way. Like if somebody has a grid, you'll make like a wheel. I had the grid first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but so you're, you know, you're owning I, the grid is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, flip or beat everybody. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I, I try to be original. So even if I have to copy someone else's feature, I'll try to do it my own way. And so I respect other people who do that same thing. So like I see in, in like the PC laptop space or the Android phone space versus Apple and you know, other people. Um, I like when Android and when crazy PC manufacturers come up with their own solutions to problems. Like I respect that. Even if I don't like their solution as much, mm -hmm. I, I have more respect for that. Oh my god. I want to have another separate conversation just about like what you don't like about Android. Because I, I, I mean, I'm sure there's some fascinating Honestly, things. Honestly, I haven't used it that much. Well, there's your problem Android, right there. Android is not in my world. It's not in my attention span most days. Yeah. I don't spend that much time thinking about it. Because thinking about iOS and the website, which even that I barely think about, thinking about the iOS app is a full-time job. Right. Right. And staying competitive on the iOS app is a full-time job. All right, I'm gonna, we, I, we have to wrap, unfortunately, because I have a bunch more things I want to talk to you about. But I quickly want to know just a couple of, I mean, you're obviously very focused. You just talked about being original, and you obviously appreciate beautiful design. What are some apps, what are things that you use every day that you're like, I wish I could have made this, or I'm in awe of this, or this is a beautiful, you know, really smart design that I love? Like, what's something for you? I mean, I'd just like to know. <laughs> well, is, that, the, is that tough? Yeah. Well, Instant. I have a great. long answer, uh, but we don't have time for a long <laughs> answer. Uh, you know, design, my opinion of design is very different from what most people can. My opinion of design is, you know, to quote Steve Jobs, how it works. Most people think design is putting textures and gradients on everything. And so for me, apps that work really well or solve the problem really well, to me, that's great design. So I think a good example of that is Instagram. It, Instagram took mobile. It, it, it was basically Twitter for photos, which ends up being a really big deal. Uh, what it did, Facebook should have done that. The reason why they bought Instagram is because it freaked them out, because it attacked the, one of the biggest things people use Facebook for in an area that Facebook was not doing very well in addressing. Um, Instagram solved that problem so well. And by the way, the way to use Instagram, I'll give my secret to everybody, never use filters. Seriously, changes the app. Makes you a better photographer. Unless you're terrible at photography, in which case you're doomed. Well, but you know what? But it, it, the purpose of, the, of Instagram photos is not to look old. It's not to look like you took them, took them with, an, with an SLR. And if you did and you imported it, that's kind of dirty. Don't do that. People do uh, that. I know. It's, right? That's take, rude. Like, they take pictures of DSLRs and then import them. Yeah. And they're like, hey, check out this awesome picture I took. Phil <laughs> Schiller did that. Did he? Yeah. And then he quit. No wonder. And there, he was like, I'm sh I've been shamed into quitting. Yeah. Marco, uh, I, I wish I could talk to you longer. You've got to come back. Thank you so much. Thank really you. appreciate it. Marco Armand, everybody. And uh, yeah, you're definitely coming back. <laughs>